if you are dragging baggage around, like old crap, like anger and resentment and guilt, like you're holding on to that, it doesn't hurt anyone but you. Holding on to that is like poisoning yourself and expecting the other person to get sick. And what is that? That is being unforgiving. It's like carrying a bag of rocks around with you. It's like poison. It's heavy and it's pointless. And of course, it's the opposite of that that is helpful, forgiveness and understanding. And yes, I know that it's easier said than done, but I did do it. And I want to show you that that is the thing that can help you take control back of your life. And I'm going to try and talk you through how you can actually do it. And I'm going to show you how I did it because it took me two bloody years of my life before I got out the other end, but I did. And I'm sharing my best example that I can think of so that you can help see how big bad things can switch to the thing that saves you. I'm Mel, I come from a history of trauma. But after years of self-development, I have come to a place where I have been taking on a new challenge. <laughs> My mission for the last 10 years is trying to figure out how to live without ego in this ego world of ours. I'm just a person. I'm navigating work, relationships, family. I've got ups, I've got downs like everybody else. And I'm trying to share my journey here in the hopes that it might help someone else along their way, right? Fellow travelers. So if you find value in this kind of thing, feel free to like, share and subscribe if that feels right for you. Okay, so the ego is judgmental, it's unforgiving, right? It can also be other things. Victims, martyrs, a dictum. Do you know what a dictum is? It's like a dick. And then when somebody retaliates, they act like a victim. So there are many different permutations of the ego, but all of them are unforgiving. So why does this matter? Here is the hard truth, like I said at the start. If you hold on to unforgiveness, meaning judgment, right? That is like poisoning yourself and expecting the other person to get sick. Because it keeps us stuck in that like icky combo feeling like pain and anger and sadness and you're replaying the same shitty memories and you're holding on to the blame and it isn't helpful. Those are unhelpful thoughts because that's all they are. They are unhelpful thoughts that are happening right now. The resentment is that drag, right? It keeps circling around these things that happened to us in the past because it isn't happening now. We're just thinking about it now. And that thinking brings the feelings and that's drinking the poison over and over and over again here in the present moment. Time alone, like being away from that issue, won't fix this crap because we are taking it around with us in our minds, the poison. Can you see that? So it is what we do with our time that heals us. And of course, that's the only point to time, by the way, according to A Course in Miracles. So forgiveness isn't about letting other people off the hook. It is about letting ourselves off the hook so that we can pour that bloody poison down the drain and leave it there and walk away from it and never get near it again, ever. So why does this matter to me? I am speaking from experience here. I know what it is like to hold on to that unforgiveness, that judgment, that blaming. Because you see, I had this 12 year relationship with the love of my life and it had these beautiful high points, but towards the end, there were so many lows and they were downright shitty. There was this one incident between my husband and my, myself and my youngest child who isn't his child. And it basically forced me to leave. And I was devastated. I was pissed off. I was sad. I was all the feelings, you name it. So for two years, I was stuck in that recovery mode. Um, and I made a video over here about how you can get through that time and what helped me. But the two years I spent so much blaming him for what he did do and what he didn't do. So much blaming for myself, for how I didn't help him enough, for leaving. Poison, poison, poison. So. I've always been a codependent people pleaser. And of course he had more issues than I could handle, right? And about six months after leaving everything behind, it hit a wall. I realized that 
I, if I didn't find a way to forgive him and to forgive myself, I was never going to re stop reliving this shit over and over again. And I was previously introduced to Dr. Kirsten Neff's self-compassion course and I had to go back to it for this particular exercise that I found in there. And there's this phrase that you can say and it hit the mark for me 100%. So I started with him and it says, may I begin to forgive you for the hurt you may have caused me wittingly or unwittingly. And then I had to turn it back on myself. May I begin to forgive myself for the hurt I may have caused wittingly or unwittingly. It's impactful, I tell you. I think what did it for me was that I didn't have to be completely forgiving, like 100%, I could just start it. And if I could find myself judging from time to time, I could then say those words to myself over and over and blow me sideways. It worked. And it wasn't gone overnight like a bloody miracle. Don't get me wrong. I had to say these words to myself over and over every day. And I wrote it down on this little card and I put it in my purse and I could check it when I was at work, when I felt I needed it. And it took time, way longer to forgive myself than him. But I finally realized that I did everything I could, right? He's an adult and I wasn't responsible for his choices. And it was time to stop carrying the, the shit and start taking care of me. There's this phrase in Codependent No More by Melody Beatty. Great book. It says, I'm sick of being addicted to pain and I'm sick of being addicted to suffering and I'm sick of letting men work out their unfinished business in my life. By the way, if you're a codependent, I would highly recommend that book. It saved me over and over. So here are five no bullshit steps that I would recommend if you want to practice forgiveness. First one, face the hurt head on. There's no sugarcoating this stuff. Stop pretending everything is fine. If someone hurt you, acknowledge it. Write it down. Talk about it. Whatever. But don't bullshit yourself. You can't forgive what you cannot face. The crap is right there and you need to own it before you can let it go. And I always say rather out than in. Step two, forgiveness is about you. That is the thing. Forget about them for a second. This isn't about them. Forgiveness is for you. If you carry around that resentment and the anger and you drag it around like a bag of rocks, it is heavy and it is pointless. Every act of forgiveness is like dropping one of those rocks. And don't misunderstand, you are not excusing what they did or what happened. You're just choosing not to let it screw with you right now in your life anymore. Step three, self-compassion. Even when it feels weird, right? You are not perfect and they aren't either. So use Dr. Kirsten Neff's technique. It worked for me, it is bloody awesome. May I begin to forgive you for the hurt you may have caused me wittingly and unwittingly. Write it down, then flip it over. May I begin to forgive myself for the hurt I may have caused wittingly or unwittingly. And it might feel awkward at first and stupid, but it works, trust me. And if it gets you out of that churn of the, build, the guilt and the blame, and it reminds you that everybody is flawless, that all of us can do with some forgiveness. Number four, set boundaries. Look, you cannot control what other people do. If you're still trying to do that, you are holding on to stress in your life that you don't need. Face reality, okay? Set clear boundaries. Stop trying to fix someone who doesn't really want to be fixed. They are not ready to change. You have enough on your plate. Let them deal with their own crap because this is about you taking back your own power. I have this phrase pinned on my computer screen. It says, let people do what they want to do so you can see what they'd rather do. And that will answer all your questions. And yes, for all of the codependents out there, this is a hard thing to do, to let people just be. I know, try it anyway, because you wanna be free, right? And then step five, Forgiveness is a daily practice. It's not a one-time deal. 
It isn't some magic wand. You're going to have to wake up tomorrow and face the things and it's not going to be amazing. It's going to be a daily grind. And there will be days when all those crap feelings just come right back and that's normal. Every day that you practice forgiveness, whether it's forgiving that idiot that cut you off in traffic yesterday or your boss because she yelled at you because she was super stressed out or for yourself for calling that person an idiot and you're clearing out a little more of that emotional shittiness. You're making more space for blessed bloody peace. So let's be clear. This isn't about pretending that the pain, that thing that pushed your button didn't happen because that would be crazy. That's hiding because it happened. It is not about excusing shitty behavior. It is about getting you free from those hooks of resentment and guilt. You deserve peace. You deserve forgiveness. You deserve understanding. And this is how you get there. Baby steps. It is the only way, in fact. And yes, it is not an easy street. Nothing is. Thinking of forgiveness, think of it like a mountain, right? You're climbing a mountain and it's steep and the rocks are sharp and you're carrying this bag of rocks of everything that's happened and you're dropping it. Every step, the load gets lighter and eventually you get to the top and then you can see how far you've come. That's your journey. This is your life. You are the CEO of your life. Own it. So when we leave behind that resentment and we drop that ego's grip on us, that's when we make space for peace. That's when we become more free. So imagine a life where you've taken back control, right? Where you've set boundaries and you've let go of the crap that's not serving you. And then you move on because you've got this. Every time you choose forgiveness, you are showing up for yourself in a way that nobody else can. Please stop carrying that extra weight. It's time to drop the baggage because your peace is waiting for you. It's one day at a time though. So let me ask you, what is the heaviest thing you're still carrying around with you? Why don't you put it in the comments box? Is there someone you need to forgive? Is it maybe yourself? Put it in the comments. Let's see what you're holding back. Sometimes just putting it out there is that first step before you can start to let it go. If you really want to try something, try some of those five steps I mentioned. Love you. Mm -hmm.